Welcome movie watchers. Thank you guys for stopping by my channel. Today we're going to be talking about the 60th Walt Disney Studios animation film, Encanto. The Madrigals are an extraordinary family who live hidden in the mountains of Colombia in a charmed place called the Encanto. The magic of the Encanto has blessed every child in the family with a unique gift. Every child except Mirabel. However, she soon may be the Madrigal's last hope when she discovers that the magic surrounding the Encanto is now in danger. So like I said, this is the 60th Walt Disney Studio animation film and they haven't lost their charm. This is a solid, solid animated film that I absolutely loved everything about Encanto was magical from the animation to the characters to the progression of the story the house that the Madrigals live in they have this door that is able to tell them what their power is you may be able to tell the future you may be very strong you may be able to talk to animals but it comes time for Mirabelle to discover her powers she doesn't get one and so she feels very out of place with her family everybody's has this very fascinating power and she's often left out of everything so right in the first few minutes of the movie you feel something for this character you are sad for her in her position you are immediately drawn into her story because she feels out of place with what is going on. So you're able to immediately connect with this character, feel something for her, and then the journey that she goes on, you are right there wanting her to succeed and find her place in this home. The house is starting to fall apart and she realizes that she may be the one that can bring it back to its glory and save everybody in the house and this community too that lives around this big house. I was really on board with the character at first and we have a few musical numbers to kind of accompany those progression moments for this character, that development. And then when we get to the meat of the story of this house and how it's starting to crack and the power is starting to die out, she goes on this journey trying to, she goes on this journey to try to save all of that. I like how the film was set up, establishing the character, establishing the house and everybody around it. You got to understand each separate character in this house from the grandmother to her three children to all of their children as well. All of the cousins you can see their powers and there's some musical moments that are for each different character, which I thought was very interesting to focus a little more on some minor characters rather than Mirabelle for all of the film. So in the beginning of the film, we have a nice introduction to most of the characters and the house too, and all of the responsibilities and just the overall tone and what and how it is set up in the beginning. We have that really strong opening. And so when we get to our journey and Mia Bell trying to find her place in the house, we're on board with it and the journey and the mystery too of what is going on with the house you are really engaged with and very interested in what is going on. I was very curious many times throughout the film what is actually happening to the house and how can Mirabelle solve this mystery and make sure the house doesn't really fall apart. Lin-Manuel Miranda writes the songs for this film like he wrote the songs for Moana. Very, very talented guy. He is having a great year with In the Heights. He just directed Tick, Tick, Boom and now he has the songs for Encanto. There are so many good songs in here. I love the opening song about uh, who Mia Bell is and all of the different powers. There's some really, really personal, emotional songs for a couple of the sisters in the, the film and how are they feeling about their powers. And one thing I found to be surprising about the film and a couple of those musical numbers is the film is really able to dig a little bit deeper into these characters that have these powers. From Mia Bell's perspective, all of the other siblings should live perfect lives. And she thinks that everybody is just so perfect. There's nothing wrong with them. But there's a couple times in here where we really break these characters down and understand them and they're vulnerable and they have these emotions 
and it's surprising to Mirabelle. And so we have these development too for some minor characters that works. And yes, it is through song, but it does work very well. This movie has a very strong message of believing in yourself and believing in others and finding that joy in others and trusting others as well. And it flows so nicely throughout the film and that progression of that story and that message really works for these characters too. They have to work together, they have to believe in each other, they have to love each other. It really moves a lot of these characters forward. Now the animation in here, it just looks great. Every new Pixar film, every new Disney film I see, the animation just impresses me every single time. There are so many bright sequences with the house, the different powers, the animals. There's a lot of darker moments too. And when we start to uncover the mystery of this house and this candle and the flames going out and this big prophecy as well, it handles some of those darker moments very well. The animation just looks spectacular. The bright colors of the flowers, the movements of the house, just what people are able to do with animation will always impress me. Someone can sit down and say, this is how I do it. And I still will be impressed on how they create it. The voice acting in here is really good as well. Stephanie Beatrice from Brooklyn Nine-Nine. She also was briefly in the film In the Heights. She handles her role so well as Mirabelle. I was very surprised because I've only really seen her in Brooklyn Nine-Nine. She really has that deeper voice and a more serious character in that series. But here she's really able to open up, handle those motions very well. And those moments where they're very personal and you side with the character and you feel something for her. She's upset that she did not get this power. I love the voice acting from her and she's really able to bring this character to life. But another standout for me was John Leguizamo as Bruno, her uncle in the film. And some of the emotions that he has as well. Not really digging deep into that. Don't want to get into spoiler territory. But I really liked him in this film as well. Really, anybody in this film is great. It has a really solid voice cast. But the story of fitting in and finding yourself is very strong. Despite it being a story we've seen plenty of times, it brings a unique perspective to it with the animation, the progression of the story, and how it fits in with the characters. It's very solid and worth watching these characters grow and learning more about these minor characters, her sisters, her mother, her father, her grandmother. Everybody has a strong moment to be very vulnerable and uh, showcase their emotions. And since they have these powers, they're not perfect people. They're not happy all the time. And the film is willing to dig deep into those moments and make these characters relatable despite having those powers. I was really happy with Encanto. I felt very happy when the musical numbers were going on. Uh, there were some very strong emotional moments that you know made me a little teary-eyed at times, I will admit. And I think a lot of things were very effective throughout the film to make it one of the better Disney films I have seen in recent memory. So before I give you my score for Encanto, make sure to check out my channel. Here I do movie reviews, trailer actions, ranking videos, tier lists, which I will have one for all 60 Disney films coming your way this weekend. So make sure to hit that subscribe button so you don't miss that video. I'm going to go ahead and give Encanto an A-. minus. Thank you guys for checking my review for Encanto. Have you guys seen it? What did you think about the 60th Disney film? Stay tuned for more up-and-coming content like this. My name is Justin Watches Movies, and you guys stay classy, YouTube.